This bout is for the FCFF Women's Championship. Coming to us tonight with a record of three wins and no losses. She is the undefeated, undisputed women's lightweight champion, Glenda Hartless Avila. There we go, fight fans. Main event of the evening. Tia trying to get the takedown of Miller's around the net. Decides to come down. Now Miller now he's in the guard. Guillotine. She tight, brings tight, 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 tight. Tia looks like she was thinking about tapping, but not quite. Glenna has it in deep. She taps. Glenna gets the guillotine choke and gets the tap. The battle of the undefeated is over. You know, Trent, I gotta correct a statement. I just said that Glenna might be one of the best fighters on the scene. That is the best female fighter on the scene. And if any girl hears this and wants to prove us wrong, I'm sure Glenna will be waiting with open fists. They have a tough task ahead of them. This is my opponent for the next fight. This is about all I can find on her. Usually, I find something. Well, with Meili, there's not one video, not one fight picture. Unfortunately, she's like a ghost. So I have to just go based on what I'm told her record is, which is 4-0 or 5-0, and that all of them have been wins in the first round. That's pretty much all I got in looking at the pictures. She looks super, super strong, so I think I'll probably take some, some serious damage. I... She's got some big arms. Some might say I'm a little spoiled by him making me breakfast almost every morning, but it's really kind of a whole family team project, these fights, because they are at a higher level of competition than a lot of amateur fights are. Everybody in this house has to sacrifice something, not just me. So we all try to work together. Do you want me to cook the steak? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to watch you cook it, though. Uh, Part of my new uh, diet is to eat red meat, which I went for probably about 15 years not eating red meat, but it is really important that I put on, we're thinking at least four pounds of muscle for this fight. I'm really lucky to have Stormy in the house that is willing to cook it for me because I promise you if I cooked it for myself, I would never eat it. When I cook steak for Glenna, she normally likes it when I sear it on both sides and then I pull it off and I cut it into smaller strips and cook it again. She doesn't want any resemblance of red meat of any sort. (laughs) That's not enough for her normally, but well, that's not good. So you've had four major fights, yes. all of which you've won? Yes. That's pretty impressive, especially since you had no background in this. It's still kind of surreal. I still look at the belts and pinch myself sometimes because people had been telling me all along that there was no way I could do it, I wasn't going to win, and I just kept pushing forward. I want to try, I want to see where to go. and. And it's It's, really going somewhere. Yeah. So going forward with this, I mean, you're 35 years old. That's got to be sort of at the age where a lot of fighters would be considering retiring probably. And you're more or less just really getting going. What's the plan there? Do you plan to go pro? I do plan to go pro. Me and my coach talk about it quite often. But uh, once you go pro, you can't go back. And um, we really want to gauge how well I'm going to do on a national level. It's like, shoot, you can't choke me. Maybe you haven't seen my arms. I eat steak. Her very first practice, she came in with these bright pink MMA gloves. And we got her hitting mitts, and it was just like giant wheels just coming like this. And then another thing I had asked her her first day was, hey, have you ever sparred before? And she said, yeah, yeah, I'm cool with sparring. And she got dropped within 10 seconds and couldn't get back up. Excellent, good. And also, just her body type, I mean, her arms were tiny, she didn't have any muscle definition. She wasn't in bad shape, but she just wasn't defined and there weren't these cut up muscles on her. And so now she's grown immensely. She's in fantastic shape. She's cut up. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna stay nice and low, keep a good post, okay? Because I don't wanna get bridge and rolled when I'm low. So I replace, meaning I don't take my hand off until my knee touches down. If I'm this way, he will dislocate or tear my ankle. 
I think she could be very, very good. She's very driven. I mean, she shocked everybody. She shocked everybody that she's fought in front of. She shocked me. But it's going to have to be one of these, everything's got to fall in line, no injuries. So if we can keep it going like this, uh, I think she's going to shock the world. Yes, there. That's it. That's perfect. That's nice. Other side down. Nice job, Lana. Fighting was never really a hobby for me. It was always a career path. The first fight was just to see, but it was like once it started, I mean, my second fight was against a boxer that had been doing it for almost 10 years. Out of the blue corner, Lena. When I beat her, boy, I, I knew that it was going to change my whole life. I'm so proud right now. I'm just overwhelmed. I don't even know what to say. She's a machine. She doesn't ever not eat right. She doesn't ever not make it to the gym and she always does her homework. She watches every fight. She's got it down to an art. To me, it seems like she's going through a lot of suffering. She's not living. Anything that she used to do, she's not doing it. She's doing only fighting, only training. She's all in. I mean, it's all or nothing and nothing's not an option for her. We grew up without much, and so I didn't have a lot of opportunities that other kids did. But I had a God-given gift of dancing, and I was known all through school as the dancer. And I had dance instructors literally take me under their wing because they just saw something. In my senior year, I had applied to a college to pursue that. I got past everything and actually ended up with an audition, and I chickened out. And I used every excuse that people do. Oh, I can't do it. I had a baby. I'm never going to have the money. I don't know where I'm going to live. Like all these things that I could have overcame. I know in my heart I could have overcame. But the truth is I was afraid to audition and fail. And I was afraid to make a fool out of myself. And I spent years, I mean literally years, wondering, what if I would have just went? Welcome, please, Lina Man, I picked that name up right what a heartless Avilia. Pink shorts, pink gloves, that's a tough sell for me. Heartless. So when this fighting thing came up, the first fight was really just, I want to see if I can do it. I saw the video of girls fighting and I thought, I really think I can do that. I want to try it. Griffith is ready, Amelia is ready, and here we go. Heartless wants to take now, and she gets it. Oh, Heartless has a full mouth. Amelia, and she is going. Amelia fires back. She's throwing leather, it's raining down. Griffith oh, trapped on bottom. Looking in for the intelligent defense. It is all over. And after I won, everything, it was like a snowball effect. Everything just started rolling. Heartless. And people who were really great fighters or had been in the business would pull me aside and be like, wow, you really have this gift. You really have this talent. And I'm just at a point where it's like, this is my last chance to do something. And I'll never forgive myself if I don't at least try. I did not sleep real good last night. I had so many stresses and anxieties on my mind. It just never feels like there's enough time in a day to get everything accomplished that I really need to. I think I'm in the worst part because I'm at a point where all the things that I'm sacrificing are really coming to a head, and it's before I've hit the point where I'm really raking in from the hard work. I'm still an amateur, so that's what I hear a lot is, you're just doing this for a hobby, this doesn't even mean anything, you're not even making money. So I have to keep my eye on the prize. I know that going pro is like, it's so close that I can touch it, and I can't falter. Annie, did you forget to turn this in? No, I didn't have to pull on this in, remember? Do you know what's for lunch today, Annie? Okay, I'll look in just a second. The thing that bothers me the most is the stuff that I'm missing out on now with my kids is not something that I can come back and go, okay, yeah, that was a bad decision, and now I'm going to come back and get this time back. It does not work that way. That's where I really start questioning it. Is this the best thing? You want it a little bit to the side like it was? Yeah. Okay. The biggest nightmare would be that my kids will tell me years down the road 
that they wished I wouldn't have done it and that they wish they would have seen their mom more. I think you're all set. Did you put on deodorant? Mm-hmm. I did. Are See, you sure? This was right here. Okay. All righty. I trust you. Oh, oh, you know what I get today? I get mm -hmm. a rock star, and it's going to be delicious. <laughs> I'm going to make one of you. It's going to be the first thing I drink when I'm done fighting. Are you coming? I can. I hope you can go. I like it when you go. But just be prepared. It's probably going to be one of the worst ones you see me in. Why's that? Just because she's really strong and aggressive. You mean like all the other ones that you were worried about being strong and aggressive? <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying it's going to be a tough fight. So if you go, be prepared. Okay. Sounds fair enough. I'm happy to have Annie come and show you guys because she really has to sacrifice a lot of her time to support me so that I can pursue this and keep winning titles and keep moving forward. Almost every day after school, Annie goes all the way to Portland with me while I train for two and a half to three hours every day. Does anyone want an autograph for my mom? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they do. Okay, I brought you three choices. Okay. I know you wanted one with gold belt. We don't have any of those, but I signed them all. Oh, great. I really think I like this one. That one in the pink? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh, you're welcome. She's our hero here. We want spot for her now. Now I can say she fights for us. <laughs> It's kind of like having a different lives. I do this by day, and then at night, I drive to go train. I have days in the gym where I'm so tired from what the day brought. When we just went into the clinic, so I got that. I got I've been trying really hard to juggle it and do the absolute best that I can while I'm here, and then walk away from here, and like, it's just been hard. I'm kind of amazed at myself that I've been able to make it happen for as long as I have. It's like two full-time jobs for a year and a half, but I just keep doing it. I've got, I've got this far. I had Angel in high school by myself, and we were very, very close, like best friends almost, like just really tight, and we talked about everything. I don't know how much of our relationship changing was me fighting. We have grown apart a lot. Like, we used to have, like, a really, really close bond, and then that was gone. Like, pretty shortly after she started training. Every moment that she saw me, that's all we talked about. And every time I tried to change the subject, it got changed back afterwards. There wasn't anything else to talk about besides her fighting. And she sees that kind of as a sacrifice on her part, that she's emotionally drained for us. And I don't see it like that at all. In fact, I get really angry when I think about it, because she didn't sacrifice anything in that scenario to me. She sacrificed the confidence that I would get from her approving of me, being proud of me. I think she knows everything, and I like to think that she really knows how I feel. She probably wants it to be exactly how she pictures it, back when we were eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for dessert because we didn't have any other food. We were really close then, and I miss it. But to be a realist, that's not going to happen again. We're never going to be that close, ever again. I'm going to try and grab my wrist, okay? From here, you can really <laughs> cause some problems here. What's really going to get you strung out here is pulling you forward first to get your weight on your hands, and then I'm going to turn you. <laughs> okay, so... Pull me forward to get my weight on my hands, and now you can twist. Mm. That's sick. What kind of wrist makes wrist shift? Uh, we don't know too much. She's like a mystery girl. We just yeah. that. She just won last night for yeah. a fight by decision, but I'll get the one before that. She can get them first. Did you either watch that fight on the table? No, there's nothing on her. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, so it sucks. Six minutes after the hour, seven o'clock, Columbia River Properties bringing us our morning program. Come up in a minute, we're chatting with Glenna. She is the mixed martial arts fighter. She's fighting this Saturday. Glenna, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for coming in. My first question, why cage fighting? Well, 
it's kind of hard to explain, but I'll say that my love for the sport is more around the um, strategy aspect of it than it is about beating somebody up. A lot of people think it's very violent. But what they don't understand is there's a lot of planning involved. And really, the bottom line is it's, it's a physical game of chess. And it's not about, you know, aggression or disliking your opponent, because a lot of times we walk away, you know, friends. So some people don't necessarily understand what mixed martial arts is. You know, and, I, and I really don't. I watch it a little bit. And I, if, if you don't really understand the sport, which I don't yet, I view it as fighting. And it's, you know, I, it's hard for me to actually watch. And to think of you out there whooping on somebody or getting beat up yourself, kind of uh, just, it's just hard for me to think about the actual sport, which that's what it is to you. Right, right. And so this Saturday, this competition that you'll be competing in, this is the championship bout. Today, I'm not going to work because my ex has decided to call an emergency hearing in regards to custody of Annie. My ex-husband is coming from the standpoint that I'm not providing a real stable environment for Annie because I spend so much time in the gym training. He thinks that the violence that he sees the sport as is really negative for Annie to be around. I've been working really hard to try and keep things balanced so that... Sorry, I'm already getting emotional. <laughs> the idea of losing Annie, um, it really hurts and I hate to even think that, you know, my ex would go this route, but I think in the long run, the judge or even my ex is going to see that it, it has been a good thing for her to see a female pushing forward and following through on things that maybe the rest of the world doesn't quite understand. It's pathetic that he can literally think that he's going to take her away from a good home, from her mother, who she's been with for her whole life, solid, who has an established room playroom, a schedule, school. She's got her pets here. She's got everything here, Every, everything. Well, here's the thing, as dumb as it is, I don't know how the judge is gonna perceive it. Who, listen, perceive it. you know what? I don't know because stranger things happen and I have a right to be worried either way. Like I'm worried about how the judge is gonna see it. I'm worried about how financially I'm gonna cover fighting him. I'm worried about what's gonna happen with this house. I'm worried about having time to train and still focus on all these things. Like I am freaking worried. I'm scared to death about what is gonna happen right now. <laughs> So on top of everything else that's going on with court and custody and work and training and all that, I'm having a situation financially with my house. Bought this house on my own about three and a half years ago, but I fell behind. I had trouble paying the mortgage and the mortgage company offered me a great deal. And that was this home modification program. It was really exciting. It was going to cut my mortgage almost in half. This last time when I called to make my mortgage payment, I was notified that they will no longer accept my payment and that uh, I was in danger of being booted out of the program, which means I might be foreclosed on. So I had a little bit of a meltdown because this house is very important to me. I grew up really poor, bouncing from apartment to apartment, and I wanted my children to have more. So I'm kind of devastated that I might lose it. But with the custody case pending, it's another thought that really weighs on me that if I, if I did lose the home, what the judge would think as far as Annie goes. So this is Annie's world. She does keep it pretty messy. I have an agreement with her that she keeps her regular bedroom clean and this is her world and she can do whatever she wants. Kind of what I always wanted when I was a little girl. That's her hamster cage, honey buns. This was her Liz doll. Liz is my training partner. This is the Liz MMA Barbie. I don't know what she did with her other ones. She has ones that she drew black eyes on from, from fighting. It's pretty funny. She'll take them to the gym and play with them while we're training. But she does a lot of funny stuff up here. Oh, <laughs> like this. She has pictures of me and she's collected these and actually signed them, uh, Glenna Avila's daughter, and handed them to her friends at school. <laughs> I had all brothers, so I didn't have much growing up. I had boy hand me down everything. So I typically use their G.I. Joe dolls for Barbies and things like that. I think I had a She-Ra doll once. That was my Barbie for a while. This is what happens when you have a mom that never got to be a little girl.
woke up this morning in a lot of pain. I'm not sure what's going on with me physically. My legs are really on fire. Took a tumble in practice and hit my hip pretty hard. So we're on our way to see Dr. Z to find out if it's something that we can fix right away. Because right now I can hardly even walk. I don't. I can't see me being able to even fight at all. She's been pretty lucky that she hasn't had any real significant injuries. Because say she blew out her knee right now, she won't make it. Because it's gonna take her longer to heal with obviously her age, she's not gonna heal as fast. And, and if she gets a pretty significant injury, that's gonna put her out six months at least. You know, If she has to have surgery, that's a year. So if she ever gets an injury that requires a surgery, she's probably done. It was a throw. Well, we were practicing throws and I was hitting it over and over. Yeah, all right, let me feel. Do you feel that? Yeah. Feel that? You got a hematoma there. How many days to the fight? Four? Four. Okay. It'll get better, probably two and a half days. All this stuff is just going to take care of itself. But then one or two days. It's, it, it, the best thing you can do is ignore it. Uh, the best thing you can do is just pretend like it's not there. Dr. Z doesn't think there's anything really wrong with my legs other than just all the work that I've been doing. I hope he's right. I mean, I trust him. He's one of the best doctors for people who do this kind of sport, so. What's up? I'm getting ready to go to the gym. Where's so, the game? well, that's what I was going to ask you. What are you doing tonight? I don't know, Homer. Because if she can stay, she'd probably be happier. And I'm just going to be drilling stuff. If you want to watch her, I know. I don't want to, but I will. I It'll be good for her to spend time with you anyway. Okay. Make sure she goes to bed by 8:30. 8:30. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's what I practice. It worries me sometimes because there's always so much stuff going on. Divorce, custody, the house stuff. There's a lot of stuff always going on. And there's no way to completely block that stuff out of your mind. So if she's going into a fight and that stuff's in the back of her mind, she's not fully focused on her fight. Because there are times in training where I see her mind's elsewhere. But I mean, how can it not be really? Most people deal with something big at a time. Now when you have four or five things happening right at the same time, how can you handle that? times that I've seen her in tears and wondering if it's all worth it. And with Glenna, it would be so easy just to go, uh, forget it. But she hasn't. That even at 36, it's just like a beginning. It's like she's just starting her whole life. Oh my god. <laughs> my heart stopped for like a while. That was close. It stopped and like yeah, 165 it stopped. I know. Like it went to 116.5 and then it like oh. he was about to call it and then it went. That was good. Great push. Oh my god. <laughs> that was intense. Spencer 
charge equipped for this. Nobody has dedicated this work. Okay? Nobody. Who is going to drive three hours every single day to train? Every day. Okay? You've worked way too hard. There's no way she gets in your head. Losing Red alone on to our next fight. Please welcome to the red corner, Lena Avila. Four and oh, she has the full contact fighting federation 125 pound women's belt and 115 pound women's belt. Never lost. She is fighting Maylee here tonight. She is five and oh, she holds a belt. We have a champion on champion here fight. Maylee is very, very tough. I asked her, you know, a lot of Glenna's fights have stayed on their feet. She says, I don't care. I'll beat her up on my feet. I said, okay, well, you know, Glenna's known to have some pretty good takedowns getting stuff. She said, I don't care. I'll beat her up on the ground. This is going to be a great fight. All right, Heather, it's time. You're going to pause out that jab. Really goes for inside kick and a quick left. And that was a mean looking left, Heather. Be first. Always be first. Oh, big head kick that just lands. Not too much damage. Glenna shakes it off and comes back. But comes after again, sits up on the cage. Wow, Miley is the real deal here. She is really going after this. Pushes her back up against the cage. May Lee tries to jump to the back, but gets up. Glenn on top trying to isolate that right arm of May Lee right now and starts landing big punches. May Lee is in a big, bad spot right now. Glenn Avilia trying to jump the full mount there, cross sides. Now Glenn is isolating May Lee's left arm now and starts dropping bombs again. Glenn Avilia is awful. Tall right now. And Maylee takes advantage of it. Starts digging out that arm, Heather. And that's an end of the round. Wow, what a round. Excellent. Incredible. They're doing something with Glenna's face. I can actually see some welt here underneath her right eye. Looks like Maylee caught her with a pretty good left hand. Be first. Be first. Maylee, hard jab, comes with that right hand. Glenna Field fires back. Maylee hits her. Glenna Field back to the fence. It was a hard move. Glenna definitely flinched on that one, Heather. You know, Rise Above came out tonight, and you can hear them cheering on Glenna every step she takes. They brought a lot of fans with them here tonight. At the 10-second buzzer reach, Haley takes her down, reverses the position, she's on top. Absolutely awesome. Round to round again. Wow, what an end nice. of that round, Heather. Nice. Great end of that round for Maylee. This fight could go the distance, Trent. Glenna needs to land some damage. I think that's one of the big things that we saw right the first part of the first round. We haven't really seen it since. And Glenna's playing cautious. I don't know if she can play cautious at this point, Heather. She's got to win this fight now. She's got to put some dominance. If she's going to score points with the judges to let it go to decision, or she's got to finish it. Oh, she catches the leg, comes in, and here we go. It's a power struggle between these two women here tonight. Goes for what looked like a bit of an anaconda. May Lee takes advantage of it and goes to get on top. May Lee coming perpendicular to her. She comes back in her guard. It's not a good spot for her because now Glenna has a guillotine on her. It's her guard on her. Over. And she gets the tap. Yeah. She ends the fight with a guillotine. Wow. Wow. Glenna has proven tonight that she can fight anywhere. She's fighting other champions, and that means something. This is what we call the morgue for all the uh, old articles written in the past. So we got every old newspaper from the early 1800s till now. And we have some old papers up here. Yeah, this is... Gorgeous number one heartbreaker. This is the first story right here. I was 
three months into the job. And uh, it was just one of those where I was intrigued by it. I was like, wow, you know, a female MMA fighter, hopefully trying to raise up the rank to turn professional. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty special. And I'm going to be part of that. You know, obviously I'm not training and taking all the punches to the face, but I'm telling her story. So many people love the blue collar story. People can relate. She's not some girl that lived a charmed life, had everything given to her, and she just decided, you know what, hey, I'm just gonna take on a hobby. And, you know, Glenna has really, she's captured my imagination just for that. Her rise has been meteoric in such a short amount of time. I think it's one of those things where we know that this is something special that only comes around only so often. It's a very short window for her. So I want to hit one especially out of the park when I do a Glenn Avila story because that's the greatest thing I can do non-verbally to show support for her. So this is the actual contract for Brittany Anik. This fight's going to be for a title, and then they're going to supply with one room for three nights, tickets for both of us, and then flying in March 31st. I'm not going to get hate mail or anything after I beat her, right? Well, I don't know. You probably will. I wonder if there really are people on Mars. Well, who knows? Well, if there are, I hope they have someone like you. What is your plan this morning? We could do, um... We? You? Well, yeah, you can set watch. up the stations, you know, like, um, suicide drills. Suicide drills. Yes, uh, so grab some weights. Are, Should yeah. I get some socks and shoes on? I'm going to have to go outside with you, right? Well, yeah, we're going to talk some track. Well, we'll get a jacket and okay, we'll move it. You actually might want to hurry up because I'm not starting. See, now. Ago that we were... I did. You weren't listening. You were playing poker. No, I wasn't. You, you want me to do a jump up just to warm up. Then. Why don't I finish? Let's do sprints. So, are, are, you're not going to give me numbers. You're just going to give me times to do stuff. Yeah. Fine. You don't like that idea? I think I would rather do like a certain number of stuff rather than really? time because of time. Jog a lap and then do 20. Uh, sprawls, jog a lap, do 25 push-ups, jog a lap, do 30 curls. That's going to take way too long. We only have 20 minutes. I was thinking like a short sprint. The push it should be like 15 minutes, literally. Okay. I'm going to jog. You I'm set gonna, up. I'm setting up for you. A few things that where we really hit off was the fighting. Uh, they start early and often here. When I started fighting and when she started fighting, we both really had a really good, passionate love for each other. And it was really good for a long time. Problem here. He's got it. Yeah. He's got him. He's got him. He is out. Well, Stormy back puts an end to that in about 20 seconds. Stormy was the first one here this morning. He's been here all day pacing. I've never seen somebody anxious or nervous or whatever you want to call it, but he needs to stick with it because it paid off. I don't know how many times that we'd, we'd spar in the kitchen. We went as far as throwing sleeping bags down in the grass and playing out in the front yard. Stormy! And now I couldn't talk to her unless it was about something to do with fighting. If it had anything to do with anything else, it's... It just doesn't interest her. She took it to the next level where I was not going to ever take it that way. It was a hobby. I enjoyed going to the gym. I wasn't trying to make it a career. And her idea was she wants it to be a career. She wants to go pro. She's so involved in it that where we used to have something in common, we don't anymore. Oh, come on. What's the matter? It's trash. All of it's trash. Why? Because I left it in the toaster oven too long. Well, that's okay. No, no it's not. It's not okay because that's what takes so long. Well, then, like, i got to completely start over now. Well, we don't and have then to. she's going to be late. So it's like, you know, fantastic. It's fine, Angel. It's not fine. It is fine. It's not fine at all. I promise. It's not even close to fine. Inside, I promise. Take a deep breath and we're all the first. I don't have time to do that. You do too. I'm going to act like your mother. Oh. That's a beautiful bag. Oh, sweet. I see why you hit him. Yeah. Oh, it's the bad boy. Oh, my God. Yeah. To Glenna from Stormy. Ooh, other little charms for my bracelet. What is it? FCFF champion, 171710. FCFF champion, 3610. Cool. So the dates that I got my title belt. Yeah. Uh -huh. I love this shirt. 
Oh, snap, it's a flash drive. Oh, snap. What is a flash drive? <laughs> what is a flash drive? Nana, what is a flash drive? I don't know, I'm from the old country. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas, when I was a kid, was almost non-existent. For most of the childhood, we ignored holidays. We kind of pretended they didn't exist because we really didn't have the money to make them happen. All right. We did all the things that poor families do. There were times when we were on food stamps. There were times when we had to sign up for Christmas boxes if we were going to get anything for Christmas at all, if we didn't just ignore Christmas. Very sick. After I had Angel, even though I was really young, I kind of went out of my way to make sure that I could make things happen, even when I had very little. And so we've never missed a Christmas. I've always kind of made a big deal out of Christmas and birthdays. There is one more. I kind of uh, unwrapped it for you. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, go, go ahead and go upstairs and put him in his tank so you can see him swim around. It's pretty cool. <laughs> go turbo, go turbo. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting now because I'm kind of doing different things with my kids to try and keep their spirits up, to kind of shelter them from what the hard realities are right now because I'm trying to pursue something. Why are you doing that? Oh! <laughs> That's why you don't do that. Mm, where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is, right up here. This is, this is the house right here. Oh, that right here, this is where I remember most of my childhood. My brothers and I were here and uh, someone knocked at the door and the police were here. They wanted to question my brothers about a store that got robbed downtown because we didn't have parents. And so they always assumed that we were out doing all this stuff. And my mom came home and she pulled me out of the car and started asking me some questions. And the police officer had followed her and was right, basically writing down everything that I said. And my mom told me to keep my mouth shut. So basically he picked me up off my feet and said that I was going into custody and he dropped me. And I panicked and I started fighting back and it was a big scuffle between me and some of the police and my mom was getting arrested. We all got arrested, we all got taken. CPS came in and went through the house and that was the day they kind of took us away. There was a lot of things going on with my mom and she had a lot of problems. And I think that the whole thing of having um, four kids and being alone and not being able to make ends meet, I think she just kind of gave up and said, screw it. So she just, kind of left it up to me to find a place to stay for myself that I could take care of myself. I was pretty young. At the time, I don't think I realized the severity of the situation. And now I look back at it and having kids like that are around that age, I think, I, like, I don't understand it. It's upsetting. I think that's why it's hard for me with my kids right now, because I struggle and um, I don't want them to feel forgotten. There's a lot of talk about me getting wrapped up in what I'm doing and training so hard, and it is hard, but it's like, I don't want them to get that impression that it's more important than making sure that they're okay or that they're not, you know, that they're taken care of. Now your talent, this is for Tita? It's called Who's the Man. I think it's bigger though. I think it's more like a state thing. Then I think you should dance. You definitely should dance. You shine when you dance. Yeah, but I, I'm not good at choreography. If I try to plan something, then it turns out bad. Well, but if I wing it, then I might mess up. Want some help? You should be smiling or you're like, you gotta act like you're having a good time. He's emotionally completely disconnected with the audience. Am I, gonna, am I gonna dance like this? I wanna feel what you're feeling when you're dancing. If you're looking up there and you look like you're doing a chore, that's what I'm feeling. I'm not, I'm not enjoying it because I'm watching you work. That's like all I got. No. Remember how country used to make me before I spar? He used to make me yell, I'm the baddest motherfucker in here. Do you remember yeah. that? And he used to freak me out, but then every time I'd go in the spar, even with the big guys, I'd really think that in my mind. Like, uh, you know? Before you do the dance, think, I'm the baddest motherfucker in here. And then do it with that attitude. Walk out like you've already won this. You already know you got it.
tough call. I think the black one looks better. Okay. I messed up twice today. Like, my hat came off my foot mid-jump. Oh. And so, like, it, it looked like it just kind of went, like... Just remember, while you're on stage, to always look like you're having a good time, even if you're not. Is your set? Mm -hmm. Text me. We have somebody text me sure. after. He's never wanted my opinion on anything for what he wears. Since he was this big, even then, I'd tell him what to wear, and he'd be like, not that. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So both you and Brittany are both undefeated. You know, this is kind of billed as a, uh, one of those fights that, uh, you know, someone has to lose, obviously. Uh, how do you see this fight going? I think this is going to be probably one of the toughest fights that I've ever had to face, and I think it's going to be an all-out war. I think it's going to be one of the most exciting female fights that people are going to be able to see. What are some things that mentally pump you up and get you going for this fight? Really, the biggest thing right now is my daughter. I have a 10-year-old little girl, and I, I really want to set an example for her not to let uh, obstacles keep her from following whatever dreams she has for herself. If she has hardships come up, I want her to remember this time in her life as well as this time in my life and um, overcome it. The risk factor for me is huge when you think about Annie because I don't want to lose her. That's the biggest thing for me because that is the point for me that it's not worth it. Actually losing Annie altogether would destroy me. And I don't think I could fight after that. I don't think I would have any fight in me. More important than fighting is my, ch my children's safety and well-being. Outside of that, nothing. support really that's amazing i can't believe it i can't believe you guys came come in, come in. Yeah. how long did you know this was going to happen for about three weeks oh my god this is ridiculous i can't believe you kept it from me <laughs> i can't believe she did either <laughs> she even came in angel knew too you all knew yeah. i've been driving here pretty much 24 did you get a room here yeah if i wouldn't have got the day off i was gonna quit my job i'm a snowplow driver it was supposed to snow last night they haven't <laughs> called me yet <laughs> I yeah. see you live. I know. I just, if something does go wrong and I lose, I don't want you guys to freak out because I'm prepared for that too. Oh, we won't freak out. I'm Yandere with Shamrock MMA. How do you feel before a big fight? I feel great, actually. I'm really looking forward to it. Just pumped, ready to go. How did your weight cut go? Not too bad. Um, it's not a big weight cut for me. Typically, I fight at 115 pounds, and this was only 118. The first thing he said is, oh, I've been trying to get a hold of you. Brittany's not going to make weight. So I said, what are you talking about? And he said her trainer called me when she hit 130 and said she was dry here. She was dry hitting at 130. What does she walk at? I can't believe that. I can't believe this happened. I can't believe it. I would hate for us all to come all this way and her brothers and her to work this hard and not fight her. But I also won't let a messed up fight happen. But also it would be a big line as well. So if she didn't want it, I would never push it. I would never want to take a fight that's over for any of them. The winner of this fight would probably easily become number one. She's been kickboxing since she was nine years old. She's got great kicks. She is a dangerous fighter. But this is a huge leap for me if I want to get into the pros, which is what I want to do by the summer. I'm taking a big risk if she's, I do it. She's kind of a slugger, though, and if she's got some weight behind it. you got to think about, I mean, the crowd's for her. Oh, for sure. The officials for sure. are for her. The judges sure. are for her. You know, I mean, she's oh. the local champion. Tell her, tell her next time to come to Portland. Like, you want to fight me? Next time you just come on down to my neighborhood. It's a hard call. It's a very hard yes, call. It's quite the predicament. It really sucks. 
130 pounds is a lot of weight behind somebody's punch. Her overhand is what would make me nervous. What do you think? Honestly, what do you think? My idea behind her taking this fight was to see if she's ready to go pro. Because Brittany's going to be a pretty tough fight. So... Walking out to the cage first, Trent, we have Glenna Heartless Avila. She is walking into the hometown of Brittany Anik. She is the number three ranked female amateur MMA fighter for weight class. But I'll tell you what, she's never faced anyone that hits as hard and as fast as Anik. And here we have bad Brittany Anik. Anik has big, heavy hands. It's only going to take one shot and it'll put Avila to sleep. And this fight tonight could easily determine if either one of them will be going pro anytime soon. I mean, this is a title to be had. It does not get better than this. It's gonna be fireworks. Hold on to your seat. Avila, 36 years old. Both of these girls undefeated. And here we go, main event. And it comes right out, lets her right hand go. Just misses off the ear of Avila, and she ties her up. Get her back up against the cage, Lena. Anna to the cage, Avila trying to crawl up high, maybe looking for a guillotine. Kind of doing very good at keeping her against the cage. Getting her closer to her corner, you can see Ron Anderson. She's got to keep a hold of Anik, because Anik gets that right hand free. This fight could come to a very abrupt halt. We got a separation, Heather. This is what Anik wants. This is the space she needs to get the job done. Here she comes, measuring out that left big right missile. The middle goes right underneath that right hand and gets a big takedown here. Anik throws a leg up. It's kind of a dangerous spot for Glenna here. Bill on top. Front, on left side and front. Ten seconds left. Bill working hammer fist. Anna trying to roll through. And that's it around number one. Avila did a great job that round of closing the distance. We saw that big left hook come. You don't want to get hit with that. She does not like getting hit by you, okay? Hook to tie up, get her up against the fence, take her down. Here we go, round two. Round number two, Anna takes center cage. This is her game, she's measuring out that left. Big right, left, lands on Avila. Avila comes in now, scores her own leather and starts working those knees again. Go, go. Grabs hold of her, puts her to the fence. Avila looked almost a little bit stunned, Heather, her eyes open, she stood up straight. You could tell her bell was wrong. Avila's fighting it out of it. She does not want separation between her and Anna. Take your weight, take your weight. Anik's right hand, left hand are free, but she goes down. Anik on her back. It's all you! Now he's got this! Now he's got this! Take him back, go! Go for it, Go! Short time in the second round. Look at this! Sevilla's going for her right arm. This could be it. We can see an upset here tonight, Trent. Push, push, push! Anik fighting it. Sevilla has it straightened out. This could be it. the hitchhike around. Avila still has it, working the body. Saved by the bell, Heather, round number two, wow. Wow. Now look, break and strike, right when you break, strike. Your cloth walks you rock her already. It's tied up, now you have to win this round or finish her. Power, this is very bad intentions. This is you, you have to win this round, you have to win it. They both look very focused and here we go, round number three. Avila comes out, works her jab. Here comes Anik, hard left, hard right. Avila closes in. Avila just controls her all the way back to the cage. Glenna close the distance so well. And here we have a separation. This is the break that Anik needed. Anik bouncing on her feet. Anik, big right, left, just misses. Comes around, big overhand right from Anik. And here she goes, let her hands go. Right hand, left hand, Anik's landing. Hard left hand to the body of Avila. She's landing good shots. She just needs to land the shot to end this fight. Crowd is going wild. They want to see their homegirl win that belt tonight. Anna trying to push Avila off. She's trying to get space. Avila is in Anik's territory. You never want to go to the judges. And that's it. Round number three. This fight is going to the judges. Hands up, Lena. Hands up. Very nice job. You landed all your strikes. You rocked her several times. That should give you all the confidence in the world now, regardless of what they say.
So, how'd it go? Real, real. I won. Are you serious? Yeah, like I, I swear to God, like I have a medal on my neck right now. I won. Wow. I bet you it looked really cool. Okay, so I think that I just landed all on stage. Okay, I totally nailed it, and like everyone was going crazy, and like I saw in the moment, I just like, I just freaked out. I just kept going. Even the community college with my initial idea where it was like, you know, okay, my general associates and I'll just go from there. Right. But like, even that, it's like, no, that's, no. I want to figure out what I want to do and then do that. It's not like I'd never be able to dance again. No, no, but as time goes away, the harder and harder it is to go back to stuff like that. You know what I mean? We kind of have like this silent treatment thing when there's an elephant in the room, we just kind of avoid it for a while. And it was like, I'm done with this. You need to know all this stuff because I'm tired of having it like, you know, locked up in me. So now all the stuff that was causing problems in our relationships just kind of out there. I mean, now that we know, it's stuff that we can work on in general as a mother and a son. I'm just trying to get back to where we were. Look, uh, if I have not learned anything, what this is what I have learned. Be careful who you have children with because you will be tied to them forever. Yeah. You just got no business yeah. making babies out here. I, I can't even stress how careful I I don't need to know any details because I am your mother, I'm just saying. <laughs> like, seriously. I know. I know. So we kind of have the opportunity for you to either go pro now or take another amateur fight. What are your thoughts on that? I really think we could probably look for a pro fight now because we've always tried to get you where you want faster than most. And in the unfortunate spot that you maybe did get hurt in this next fight, that would just make it that much longer. So I think now is a pretty good time. But again, it's all up to you if you wanted another fight. I'm at a point where I'm finally feeling like I'm strong. Like before I always was like, oh, I'm, not really, I'm not really as strong as everybody else, but actually I do feel like I, I've earned that. So yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm really excited. I want two months training for a pro fight though, because now is when it's gonna totally count. Yeah. Nervous. I'm very nervous. I'm nervous. I'm excited. I'm just, I guess it's, I'm terrified, kind of. I'm terrified for you. Are you? It's yeah. terrified. But super excited. But it's like, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm scared. I'm terrified, but I'm excited too. Thank you for always good supporting luck. me. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Take good care. You take care too. Take care of yourself. You're 34, right? Uh, no. 36. 36, oh boy. Yeah. You're, past, you're going past your prime. Okay, so this is your medical coverage. It's gonna end basically today. Yeah. I thought you'd get a little bit of leeway there. It's just supposed to end in a month. That sucks. I'm a little stressed out. Yeah. Just like, okay, where am I gonna go? What am I gonna, who am I gonna? <sighs> yeah. For me, this is the time. I don't have the option of saying, well, I'm gonna take a couple years and see what happens. I don't have that. So it's now or never. Admissions, this is Glenna. So at this point, after the last win and the talk about going pro, I decided it was time to go ahead and say goodbye to this and just worry about making that happen. So kind of in a desperate place that I have to make that, I, I have to make that happen now. There was a lot of good times and there wasn't really that many bad times it just it got to the point where we didn't communicate anymore like she would go to the gym and i would come home at 5 30 6 30 at night and then i wouldn't see her till like 11 o'clock at night and i see glenna 10 minutes out of the day i mean i started detaching she started detaching i stopped doing the things that she wanted to do and i i gave up you know i, I gave up on all of it I mean, I still love her and care about her, but I, I couldn't do it anymore. Part of me knew he wasn't going to be able to do it, 
but there was like a part in the back that just wanted him to feel like I was worth it. But he chose to leave instead, so. Here pretty soon, we'll be strangers and it won't feel like it does now. Boy, this Megan Sato, she is the real deal, isn't she? Wow, they both landed. Lena White taking the harder shot. Wow, big shot by Megan. Oh, and another. Follows. Another. Right wow, there, Megan right is really teeing off. Oh, oh, big shot by Megan. Another big shot. Boy, they're both firing here. Wow. Wow, this crowd is erupting. Glenna has had it with the stand-up fight, Trent. She's got her. Oh. champion is not going to let this title go, my goodness. I think Opie's pretty close to stopping this fight, Jill. She's not defending those punches from Glenn on top. It's stopped. That's it. Wow. What a performance of Tom from behind. Well, I can tell you, if Megan Sato couldn't stop her, I can't personally think of any woman that can. That might be one of the best fighters on the scene right there, Trent. I'll tell you what, I finally heard back about my loan modification. This is my letter denying um, the modification, which is horrible news. It's really interesting how they made this work because it's kind of a scam. They tell you to pay a certain amount every month, um, but what they don't tell you is that while you're paying the temporary payment, they are still sending to your credit report that you're late on your mortgage. So one of the reasons why their modification has turned down is because my credit score is now low, but that's how these things work. So that's basically it. It's either come up with the total amount that I owe them at this point or they're foreclosing. And I can tell you now, after the damage that they've done to my credit report, there's no way I'm gonna get a loan to be able to cover what I owe. This is so frustrating. I don't know how you fight a big corporate bank like that. I know it's happening to people everywhere. It's not just me. So um, I hope other people are more aware at this point that if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. What's going down, everybody? This is Spaniard. I'm sitting here with Miss Heartless, Glenna Avia from Rise Above MMA. She's now taking on three days notice her first pro debut fight. So, uh, Glenna, talk about how you feel in taking this pro fight. Um, I'm a little nervous just because um, I usually get a lot more heads up, so I have time to strategize exactly what I'm going to do. This is kind of shooting from the hip. What is the next couple of days like for you? Um, tonight's going to be pretty rough. Usually the last week before a fight, we take things pretty easy. But because we took this fight on short notice, we're going to run through a lot of things really fast. So I'm expecting tonight to be probably just really tough on me physically. She's taking that fight because she needs to provide for her daughter. She needs to show the courts, I can provide for my daughter and be a professional that I'm making an income and I'm making a living, that this isn't just a part-time hobby. If she says, I've left my job for fighting, then she's gotta say and show how fighting is gonna provide those things. She needed the money, so she had to take this fight. This was the really rough time. This was really the only place that I could find housing that I could be in at my age with Angel. But it was pretty bad. People used to steal my checks just right out of my mailbox. So I couldn't buy food. I just didn't have anything. At one point in time, there were some people that came through shooting up the place. That's how bad it was. And we were hiding in my bedroom calling 911. That's why like getting the house and having like the normal situation was such a big deal. This is exactly why. Because I come back to places like this and I'm like, oh man, I don't know if I can do this again. Like, I don't know if I can come back to this kind of stuff. But at the same time, I keep telling myself, sometimes it's necessary to go backwards before you can go forward. Because as it is, exactly where I am, I'm not gonna get ahead. I'm gonna be stuck exactly where I am doing exactly this.
night before one of the biggest moments of her life, she fell on bended knees and prayed hard, the future unknown. Ladies and gentlemen, our first female bout of the evening. She cried. The butterflies floated in her belly. For the first time in a long time, doubt crept in her heart. Making her debut in the cage tonight, all the way from Portland, Oregon, Heartless, Glenna Avila! Her opponent on the blue side of the cage. She was obviously stronger than me. I was nervous, but I kept thinking I was not going to go undefeated. There would be a time I would take my first loss. Come down to how well you would handle it. And I felt like this would be my first loss. Wow. The messenger, Angelica Brotherton. Brotherton looks like she is ready to go right now before the ref even calls her the center king. Here we go, round number one. Brotherton looks ready to go. High kick just misses. Brotherton circling around. That's a mid-body shot. Villa comes in. Brotherton picks her up. Has her high. Walks her back to her own corner. Deep breath. Hips up. Brotherton hits Villa's head against the cage and slaps her on the canvas. Villa trying to sink in that guillotine choke. Brotherton just powers through it. Get up. Get up. Get to your knees. And now Brotherton's landed big knee shots to the lower spine of Villa. Get up. Get up. Brotherton is fighting pretty dirty, Trent. She's fighting like a pro fight. There's a big difference between pros and amateurs, and Glenna Villa is figuring that out right now. Oh, absolutely, Trent. And Brotherton is, well, they call her the messenger, and she's delivering tonight. Let's put it that way. Look for the arm bar, Glenna. Avila starts to go for that arm of Brotherton. Brotherton's going to make her pay for it. Ouch. That is brutal. This is probably about the time that Glenna Villa is wondering why she took a bite on three days' notice, Trent. Brotherton is just so strong, Avila cannot do anything besides get here right now and take abuse. Now Brotherton moves full mount. Big left hand. Brotherton at this point is simply beating her up. Strike with her right now. Do not let her settle her weight. Okay, here we go. Avila holding on. This is her pro debut and this matters, Trent. This makes or break sometimes your pro career in the sport. No one wants to bring in someone who's 0-1 as a pro. They want big up and cover. Here we go. Action back center cage. Avila marching forward, taking out that jab. Glenna coming through now, landing leather on her feet. She is looking aggressive. Look at the second round. She's coming out swinging. Avila comes in, lands a double puncher, backs up brother to back to the cage. Go, 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 break! Get off the cage, break! Break and strike, Glenna, break and strike. Lena Villa has to figure out how to solve the puzzle of Brotherton's strength. On both feet, center cage, here we go. Throw a big shot. That one lands. Villa now has a headlock, trying to spread her base out, and she's getting punished by Brotherton. Lena Villa better figure out a way to out quick, out smart, do something because she's not winning this fight. Lena, right under hook. Right under hook and get her up against the cage. Right. Okay, now bring her up. Bring her down, right shoulder pressure down, right shoulder pressure down and twist. Here we go, hey, up and to the right, take her down, take her down. Right under the pressure, up, get her down. On top, on top, on top. Good, here we go, start working your fight, Lena. You have a minute and a half. Get on top, get on top, on top, right here, lock him out. Brother, control of the posture of Avila. Avila can't break him. Put your face down in front, face down in front. We have to win this round. This is a 1-1 fight now, okay? I want it striking. Break and strike the whole time. So keep it on the feet. She comes in to close it up, break it up. 1-1, you have to win this round. You have to get confident right now. Here we go, Glenna. Take this round. This is it. Keep breathing. Stay striking. Don't let her close the distance. Right! 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 Right, Lena. Brotherton is just so strong, there's not much ability to do at this point. She's just getting outpowered. Get your back off the gate! Oh. Right, Lena! Avila, you can see in her eyes, she knows she's gotta do something this final round. This is it, this is make or break it time. This is, do you wanna be an MMA fighter as a career, or is this go home and just say that you had a good time? Avila, her entire body is working on that left arm of Brotherton. Brotherton's okay with this because the time's still ticking, Heather. Get the kick! Push! Push! Avila has to do something. Look here, she is. Just like that, she turns around, 
takes the back of Rutherford. Good. There we go. Strike, 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 strike. Keep it going. Now it's you. Good. Hey, forearm on the face, Glenna. Forearm on the face. Go. You've got two minutes here, Glenna. Two minutes. Strike, strike, strike. She's throwing everything she has right now at Brotherton. Brotherton, though, not face. Keep it composed. Move it around. Glennonville has never lost a fight today, but she's going to go out swinging if she's going to lose this one. One minute, Glenna. Avila grabs the left arm of Brotherton. Comes around. Full mount. Brotherton has a right arm trap. Elbow! Way forward! Elbow! Glenna Avila's time is running out. She's got to figure out a way to end this fight. 20 seconds, Glenn, on look! 20 seconds! 20 seconds, non-stop! Look at this, Trent, she has got the arm! Brotherton tries to power out of it! She needs to extend that, get her hips! She's got the tap, Trent, she's got the tap! Oh, 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 with just seconds left in the third round, she pulls out victory from the jaws of defeat. She fought for this one, Trent. There's no doubt about that. Oh, she earned it on this one. She earned it. Ladies and gentlemen, I think Glenn Adela definitely learned tonight in those 15 minutes what it's really like to be a professional fighter. She's got a very promising pro career ahead of her. Welcome to the pros, Glenna. Congratulations, champ. You know, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you're just walking down the street and you just pump your fist like, yeah! What a... I still can't believe it. <laughs> For me, it was a moment to justify, yes, this is all worth it. Yes, I can do this. Mm -hmm. This isn't just a pipe dream. I'm not just crazy. Now I'm a professional fighter. I'm a professional athlete. And I can tell people that and I can say it with pride. Yeah. I feel really good about that. You know, you told me all the time about, I can't believe how far I've come. And how much more further can you go? At this point, yeah, I'm going to have to move closer to the gym because this is going to be my life now. Not every step is easy, but um, it's one that I'm going to have to take. Oh. 